This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. The third NURBS construction tool we're going to discuss is Extrude. Extrude allows you to take one NURBS curve, turn it into a cross section, and extrude it along a second NURBS curve, which becomes a path. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to use a NURBS primitive circle for a cross section. Now this will just be a curve and not a surface. So if I go up to Create, NURBS Primitives, Circle, I'll get a circle. It's just a curve. I'll go ahead and frame that. And then go to Control Vertex Mode so you can see the vertices. So you can see that, in fact, it is a NURBS curve. This simply ends exactly where it starts. So I'll go back to Object Mode. Now we need a path to extrude that along. So I'm going to go to the front view. And the circle is actually still there in the front view. It's just a little hard to see because of the grid. So now I need a path. So I'll go up to Create CV Curve Tool. Click that. And now the first vertex of this new curve, I want to be at the origin. So I'm going to go up to Snap to Grid, turn that on, and then click at the origin just for the first vertex, and go back and turn off Snap to Grid. So you can turn that on and off as many times as you want to, even while you're drawing a curve. So there's the first vertex. Now I'm going to draw the rest of that path curve. And in fact, I want to draw a spiral shape that might be suitable for a hair or, say, a seashell. When I'm done, I'll just hit Enter to freeze that. Now I'll go back to the perspective view so we can see both of those curves. So there's a the cross section, and there is the path. So in order to use the extrude tool, I have to select these. But I have to select them in the correct order. For that tool to work properly, you have to select the cross section first, and then select the path. And now I'll go to the tool, Surfaces, Extrude. Now there are some options that are good to try for this tool, so I'm going to go to the Option box. And there's the Option window. So these are the default settings. So let's try applying the tool with the defaults. Now there's one trick for any of these Option windows, and that's if you click the Tool button, for instance, Extrude, they'll apply the tool but close this window. If I click Apply instead, it'll still apply the tool, but keep this window open, which is convenient if you want to make a whole bunch of extrusions, for instance, all at once. So let's try Apply. So I'll hit Apply, and there's the extrusion. I've already turned on Smooth Shade All so you can see it, but there you go. You can see that the extrusion is not following the path very carefully. In fact, it's going towards the cross section, and then it goes off. It follows the same basic shape, though. So why is that? That's actually an option. So I'm going to undo this so we can try it again. Control-Z until that goes away. And we'll look at the window. So the reason it follows the cross-section, not the path, is because result position is set to at profile. However, if you change that to at path, then it'll follow the path more carefully. So at path, we'll apply it again. And there the extrusion follows the path very carefully. If you look at this extrusion, you can see that the circle shape that's serving as the cross section is basically placed along that path wherever there is a vertice, and that's turned into a surface. So it's almost like a loft. If you were to place a circle here and here and here and here, all the way to the end, pick them in the correct order, and then apply the loft, that's basically what you get with this tool. So there's a few other options that are fun to play around with. So I'm going to undo again, Control Z until that goes away. And then we'll try something else up here. One thing you can change is the style. Right now we're set to tube. However, we can also do a flat extrusion. So let's try flat. And then we'll apply it. So what flat does is it takes each one of those cross sections along that tube and makes sure it's oriented towards the original. So there's my original on the ground. Therefore, all my other cross sections are oriented towards the ground. Just like every other tool we've used so far for NURBS, there is construction history. So if I wanted to, I can go back to the original cross-section curve. So if I go up to Select by Object Type and turn off everything but Curves, then go and pick my cross-section curve, which is right there. And then if I mess around with it, like rotate it, you'll see that my extrusion changes. For instance, if I rotate it so it's more up in the air, like this, 
The tube has its cross sections oriented in the same manner as that original cross section. All right, in case that is the flat option. So let's undo this until the tube goes away. There we go. The third style is distance. Distance is a little bit stranger. I'll just demonstrate that very quickly. If you set the distance, what happens is you have a very flat tube oriented in a single plane. Let me make sure I'm picking these in the correct order. So cross section and then path, and we'll apply that. So what you get with the default settings for distance is you get a really short cylinder at the start, which you can get rid of later. It's a separate object. You can delete that if you want to. But for the main path, you get what's well, basically a ribbon. So you get a flat shape. And again, since this new extrusion is separate from this little short cylinder, I can delete that cylinder if I don't want it. So I'm going to click undo a few more times. Get back to the start. Select my cross section and my path again. So I'm going to set it back to tube now. That's probably the one I use the most often. There's a couple other fun options here, and that's rotation and scale. These are offsets. So what it does is you can either rotate and or scale each of the cross sections as it moves up that path. And then by the time you're at the very end, you will have achieved that complete rotation or that complete scale. So let's give that a try. For instance, if I scale it up, let's say I put scale to 5, and I hit apply. What happens is that cross section gets bigger and bigger towards the end. So the initial cross section, in this case, is one fifth the size of the end, or in other words, the end cross section is five times bigger than the start. So if you were to play around with that scale value, you can make something like a seashell. So for instance, if I was to back up on that with undo, and we'll try a different scale, maybe 2.5, try that. We'll get a shape that doesn't quite intersect itself so much. Or if I undo it again, I'll try maybe 3.5, try that. And it could potentially be a shell or something that's very tightly wound. So in case, that's setting the scale to a non-1 value. So I'm going to return that to 1. Then we could try rotate. Rotate just offsets that cross-section by a certain number of degrees. So we'll try 270. I'll click Undo to undo this extrusion. And then we'll reapply this. So now it's 270. What that means is the initial cross-section is 270 degrees different from the end, or the end has been rotated. So you see that the end circle is still oriented towards the ground like the original cross section. However, what's twisted is the circles as they go up the path in terms of their Y rotation. So what's happening is the tube is torquing as it goes up. So it's twisting along the tube itself as it goes up. So if you were to follow this heavy line, which is where that circle wraps around itself, you'll see where the heavy line starts and where it ends is different because it's slowly torquing across the tube. So if I follow that, you'll see it kind of starts on one side and then torques across the other side and keeps torquing until it winds up in a different area than where it started. And again, that thicker line, when you have it selected, is where that circle meets itself. It's kind of like on a nerve sphere where you have the two edges meet, same thing. That represents two edges that come together. So in that case, by setting it to 270, you're, you're torquing that cross section as it moves up the path. So those are the main options of the extrude. And one thing to remember is the number of cross sections you do get with extrude is based on the number of vertices of your original path. So if I go ahead and undo this extrusion, pick that path curve, go to object mode, and go back to control vertex, you'll see that wherever I have a vertex, you'll basically get a subdivision or get a cross section on that extrusion. So if you want to have a curvier extrusion, in other words, more subdivisions, then you need to build a curve that has a greater number of vertices.